I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Chevrolet Silverado 1500. ZR2 Bison Edition. Yuri, floor it for me. America, America, America. Pretty good. Obviously no launch control. Horsepower and torque. 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque from a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. Oh, some good power considering there's all that junk at the back. Yeah, that's right. So we have the Bison AEV edition. So we have a ton of overlanding stuff on the back. And when you're an overlander, the number one rule of being an overlander is to let people know that you are an overlander at all times. So you have all the stuff on the back, but let's actually check all that stuff out right now from the outside. All right, Jacob, where do we start? Do we pop the tent or do we try to take these gas cans off? Okay, let's start with the gas can. So okay, we, have a, we have a gas can. Potable water. That's right, so I've already peed in that one. I suggest you don't drink it. Do we just twist these? Yeah, you just twist this and it unlocks and then you spin it enough ah. times and then you can take it right off. And then take it to the gas station, take it to you know the washroom. And this drink is where out of it. you pee. That's exactly it, yeah. Okay, so we got these with, uh, I guess, roto packs. This is a really cool setup. Kind of makes a lot of sense how they did this. There we go. Oh, installs it backwards. <laughs> wow, now all of our rolling shots are different. Okay, we've got a propane cylinder here, Yuri. What does that mean? So if we unzip this, here, watch this. Unzip. Why is it so high up? I you gotta, you gotta step on here. Check it out, check it out. There's, okay, there's no actual holds for you. Uh, <sighs> Oh, yo, it's Literally actually a propane cylinder. It's actually a propane cylinder. Yeah. I can't get it out. But I can connect stuff to it. That's right. For camping, like a stove. Next thing, since you're already standing on the uh, tailgate, let's get you off the tailgate. Let's put the tailgate down. That's the other button. No, you, you just did the top part of it. Yuri, you're not a truck guy. Get the truck guy over here, Truck King Jacob. Wait till I get Shout a- Shout out Truck King, by the way. Wait till I get an SSR, and then I'll be a truck guy. Okay, so we got this, we got the Pro Power stuff, you could use this, and now Yuri can get into the bed. Oh, I could have got the propane tank like this, Th so much easier. That's what I'm saying. Okay, plus there's, there's this, which we're gonna get to in a second. Is that a okay. ladder? Yeah, obviously it is. Okay, ready? We have not popped this tent up yet. This is the first time we're doing this for a real experience. I assume this is all you do. Two clips. And push, push. Unlatch, and push up. Oh, whoa, dude, that is huge. Is that camera still showing this? Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, what else we got? Does the back end go or is it a triangle? No. Oh, there's a bar. Hang on. Hang on. This is uh, Overlanding 101. This is the number one overlanding channel on YouTube. Uh, uh. Oh, there's some kind of bar here too. Oh, I think I have to connect that to this. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Ah, we're camping. Oh, God, that's a big jump. <laughs> okay, so now. How do we get in there? We need our ladder. I think we have to put the tailgate away now. Okay. So this is all Roof Nest, the company that supplied the uh, top part of this where you sleep. And Overland North is who Chevy worked with to uh, equip this whole truck for us. Yo, this ladder already looks 10 times better and more sturdy than that ladder we had on that. Oh dude, uh, this is like- Lexus prototype. This is heavy duty. Plus there's bags and stuff. I think this is for hanging outside of the tent. All right. Oh, it's even strapped down, this is serious. Okay, let's put this away. Oh God. Don't, don't put it away. Yeah. It'll work. All right. Oh dude, we got hooks. That's what I'm saying. All right. Last, I... last one up, Sarande. Ah! 
I didn't even test the safety. I don't think you're supposed to do that with somebody on a ladder, Yuri. Yeah, who My health and safety department is gonna be real upset. It'll be funny if you fall. Uh, okay. Oh, it's soft up here. What? Dude. Oh, this is all taped up. Oh, it is soft. This is a mattress? Yeah, it's a mattress. What? Oh, with like, like an airflow thing. Oh, that's like a little bit more padding below. Okay, so here, here's the zipper. I'm gonna lie down. Oh, we got USBs back here. I wonder what the weight capacity that is. That you have to plug into something <sighs> for LED lights. Here we go. Yo, here we go. Now we got airflow and a view. Oh. What a beautiful view out here. Does this, does this open up too? That's more airflow. Oh. Is that that's a, that's a skylight. <laughs> As an experienced overlander, that's exactly right, I can what put that my is. cell phone right here. Yo, and we have LED strips with USB power. So these are just, you can take these out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Dude, this is pretty sick. Do I fit at six foot one and a half? I fit. Sleeping like a corpse. Perfect. Better than a ProMaster. Yeah, way better. Now for the next test. Jacob, piss drunk, try to climb out of here and take a piss and come back. All right, is there and a ladder down here? <laughs> <laughs> so if I was to throw up out of the back of this, wouldn't even hit the tailgate. <laughs> Yuri, I need the gas canister so I can piss in it. That's pretty sick. Comfortable. 10 out of 10. The lineup for the campground to leave is getting pretty crazy. Oh, you gotta no. get out of here, pack it up, and get out. Starting. Okay, I have to now. zip this up first. Go, go, go. Come on. Come on. We're gonna be late. There's a storm coming, too. Yeah, yeah, and the traffic. We're trying to leave that place in the desert where everyone went and partied, but it's muddy. Oh, yeah, Burning Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, don't forget the stick. Oh, I know, I know. I gotta get out first. Okay, here. If I was in my ProMaster uh, camper van, I would already be gone. I assume the timer's going? Yeah, it's a uh, British voice guy. Let us know how much time is left. Uh, Bro, me? look at this. I just pull this down. I think that's it, right? I gotta hide all this stuff on the sides. Doing this properly. So I guess it was probably smarter to do the ladder before. There we go, there we go, there we go. Dude, this is so easy. Make sure it's all tucked in there. A lot of air in there. Come on. There. Close, close, close. Trying to do this properly. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah. Done. Done. Unhook. Get in, get in, get in. You go, get in, go, you're go. the one driving. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> we don't even need to use the max tracks. Wrong way, Yuri. <laughs> Forward. And we left Burning Man. <laughs> so there's some pretty cool stuff back there. You can sleep, you can do whatever you want, go camping, overlanding. This thing's pretty rugged. Let's get to the rugged stuff. It is a ZR2 Bison or a ZR2 Bison. ZR2, we're American. Sorry. So, so, we, get... so we can off-road? Yes. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drive half on the gravel. Oh boy. That's pretty good. Oh my God, I yeah, cannot dude. feel anything. That was really good. That is unreal. I do have a complaint about the shocks and daily driving, but I'll get to that later. You're sending it through Cliche Corner right now. I'll let you finish this before I uh, get to the next part. Words, Yuri, words. <laughs> there are no words. <laughs> where we're going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the Bison stuff and the ZR2 stuff, you get better front approach and departure angles with these steel bumpers, which look pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting like fancy skid plates with cool lettering and it's just like black. Yeah, and that's the other thing is you get skid plates underneath uh, throughout the whole thing, all the important bits. It's not just like a front cute little skid plate like a Sequoia TRD Pro. So is that, is that AEV or is that Bison? It's built in collaboration with AEV, which is American Expedition Vehicles. So can you get a Bison that's not AEV? Because I see the logo here, they're combined. It's literally combined. That is friggin' awesome. Good for AEV of that. I like AEV. 
And then we get these really nice AEV spec wheels, which look way better than the ones that we had on the Canyon, but a kind of similar design. But they're still all black. Yeah, yeah, but they do look cool. The only thing that sucks about the wheel package is that we have 33s. This thing is begging for 35s. It basically looks like it skips leg day. Like it's just like, it's it's too short at the bottom. Maybe it all blends together because the black wheels, it didn't seem that off to me. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Bison AEV? The Terrain Contact AT. Hit the link in the comments below. And I did actually look on the Silverado forums and people were actually trying to fit 35s on it like right away. I saw a lot of complaints. They're like, why do you, 33s, even the, Colorado ZR2 Bison has 35s as an option, which is like, come on, that's a smaller truck. Like, that looks mean. This needs bigger wheels. Biggest complaint. And then we also have the Multimatic DSSB dampers with the Strongman on them, just like we had in that GMC Canyon. They are pretty good, as we noticed in that slight bit of Yuri one wheel off roading or two wheels off roading. But in daily driving, I've noticed that you can like really feel every little pothole, every little imperfection to the point that they're not as comfortable as Fox shocks would be on a Sequoia or a Raptor or anything like that, or even a Tremor, which doesn't have Fox shocks. To me, who is not in tuned with the world of damping and vibrations on the road, this feels unbelievably comfortable. And then through Cliche Corner, with all that crap on the back, I handled through there pretty well. You've also driven this for five minutes and not on bumpy roads. This road is very smooth. And then what else you get? You get front and rear lockers, which you want for off-roading. You got hard buttons for that right here, which is great. And then you get a terrain mode. So you have a drive mode dial on your left side of the steering column. You have normal mode, which it defaults to, and then off-road and terrain. So off-road is for your uh, little higher speed stuff, and then your terrain is for rock crawling. You know what I'm a little disappointed of? What? This was a Ford. I'd probably get the coolest graphics in the world. Between everything here, it's like the tiniest little animation. You can customize the gauges. There's like a couple different versions of it, but none of them are that impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unreal Engine. Yo, GM. <laughs> Dude, you've got you've got it. Yeah, this do. company has this. Same infotainment. Hummer as well. does it. Why, why can't I have a, a movie every <laughs> yeah, time I change yeah. my drive mode? <laughs> I'm a child, give me that. And one of the coolest parts for me, it's really stupid, but I like it. We've got the Chevy flow tie up front, yeah, not cool. the bow tie, so you can actually get some air going through there. Like in my buddy's ZL11 LE. Exactly, so this is a speed truck. Yuri, floor it for me and see me, see me speed, please. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good power. It's nice. I really like this 6.2. Uh, I like it more than Ford's powertrains. I mean, the Coyote 5.0 is pretty good, but, you know. Yeah, how, long, how much longer are they going to be? I guess probably for a while. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah but 6.2 right. is a way bigger number than 5.0, so, you know. I guess, like, this power would be equivalent to, like, the Wagoneer power I drove. Like, that was good power in their Hurricane uh, inline six or whatever. Wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't. But like uh, something about V8 that's just. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's just, and, uh. and, 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 and like, okay, driving this is like, oh, listen to it from the outside. Okay, and then driving this, it does feel like the hood is an apartment building in front of my face at all times. <laughs> yes, okay, so I think that's for uh, one reason being that we have so much crap behind us, all that overlanding stuff, because it kind of lifts the front and gives it a little bit of a Carolina Ac squat. Accidental Carolina squat. Yeah, so the front end is like slightly higher than the back, I think. But we do have a 360 camera, and you know me, I like to make sure if I zone out at a street light or something, I can click that 360 camera and make sure there's not a little kid or a dog walking in front of me and I can program that to my favorites. And that's nice to have. Yeah, definitely. You can even use it when you're driving and look at your trailers and hook up more stuff back there. What the hell is jingling back there? I don't know, probably a shovel or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with Christmas coming up, do you want to know the best possible gift you could get for somebody in your family? I already know, Yuri. A set of Tuxmat. Go to tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes. Get them for yourself. Get them for your friends. They do have mats for this vehicle. That's it. No, like, like a set of Tuxmat for your uncle or for your dad's car. Yeah would go a long way. I know. Think about how bad it is in winter when like your carpets get wet and then they stay wet for the whole winter. That's not good for your car. No, and then the salt stains, which are a nightmare to clean in the spring. Nah, tux mat. Launch control.
Yeah. <laughs> I love V8s. Yeah, rear wheel drive is cool. Okay, so yeah. we just had the Pro Master, which is a front wheel drive cargo van, which you could camp in. I guess you can camp on this. Of course you can. This is a rear wheel drive. It's a lot cooler than front wheel drive. No. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got big old V8 power up front. We've got a 10 speed auto connecting all that stuff. The 10 speed is actually really good. I think they did a way better job of tuning this transmission than Ford did because it doesn't do that like skip shifting stuff where you don't know what gear it wants to be in. It's just like it goes to the correct gear exactly when you want it to. There's and nothing you, weird. And you have paddles, and I, well, did they take a note out of uh, Chrysler's handbook and yeah. make them half paddles with radio controls at the bottom? I what? know. Yeah, I've been noticing that, and I think some of the new Chevys, I don't know if that's been a thing, but it, it is a thing in this. And we do have half paddles to make that happen. Um, but I haven't really used them because they're more for like gear limiting kind of stuff. And this being a truck, we have two high, which is what we're driving in, which is rear wheel drive, which is why we're doing burnouts. And we have four high, four low, and then auto as well to uh, let the computers control everything for you. And if you wanted the computer to control more stuff, we got a big old infotainment up here. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wired wireless, USB, USB-C. All works flawlessly. What more could I ask for? And it is Google based, so you do have Google Maps, and I'm sure you have to subscribe to all that stuff, but we have it right now because it's a press truck. We don't have to pay for crap over here. And the coolest part is you got this home button down here, right? Yeah. You have a hard home button down no here. No way! Yeah, dude. Hey, bro, I feel like they're listening to us. I know. I feel like they're listening to us, and soon okay. we're going to have another tuning knob. That's what I was going to say, a little tuning knob. Yeah, and right next to it, like the Cadillacs, bring that back. Yeah. And then we got our trailering stuff down here for, uh, you know, Trailer, trailer game, break, trailer break, trailer break plus minus, yeah, you know, well, I towing. Know how it works. <laughs> uh, this can tow a bunch too. It is a truck. Thanks to our British voice friend, it can tow this much. 8,900 pounds. Hell yeah. And I'm not referring to my money. But back to the infotainment quickly. Okay. This is one of those new infotainments, wireless updates, all that crap. For the record, I hate all the connectivity in new cars. Same. And I hope that somebody releases a model that brags about a lack of connectivity. Yes. And then we have cup holders down here, which work perfectly fine. We've got visors, which I have uh, not tested, but come they on, should come be on. good. Three, two, one. Full This, this feels pass. very uh, blazer <laughs> slash prologue. Very thin and cheap. Steering wheels feels pretty good, and it is heated, and holy crap, this is the hottest steering wheel I have ever handled in my life. In a good way. Yes and no. It gets so hot so quickly that I have to turn it off. That is a good thing. Then we have heated seats. We also have cooled seats, which is really cool, and you can independently control the back or the butt. Liking all those hard buttons for climate, even though they're piano black. What is that? I don't know, maybe there's a chain? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, um, lots of room to put your phones and stuff. Yeah, and then super comfortable with all this stuff. The interior kind of, everything looks a little cheap, kind of like GM-ish. I think a Ford has a slightly better interior, like the Tremor, but it, nothing actually feels that bad. Yo, these seats are so comfy. They are. They're super comfortable. Uh, I, feel, I feel good about a lumbar. You got I, lumbar. I only Ford and back. So do I, but we still do have lumbar. Uh, seats back there are huge, very comfortable, lots of storage. Oh, we we also, got those com secret compartments. Exactly what I was going to say. And then the next thing I want to say is that with all that crap on the back, and they keep calling it crap, sorry to the Overland company who supplied it, it's not crap. There is no wind noise with this, where I had so much wind noise with the Sequoia, with the roof rack, with nothing on it, but there's no wind noise Maybe with that. Maybe because there's nothing directly under it. And it Maybe, can, but yeah. it's like, it's nice that you can daily this slightly embarrassingly because you have all this stuff on there. Like I took this to Costco and I was like, okay, well, I'm just a menace here. I parked next to a Tacoma with the same kind of setup, sort of. Okay, what's more embarrassing, driving a camper van 24-7, like a cargo van, or this 24-7? <sighs> I think a camper van's kind of funnier. So like, it's less embarrassing, well, no. Like if you had to take your camper van, your full sprinter van to the grocery store, or take this to the grocery store. I think this, because it's trying way harder, just because it's an off-roady truck. The other one, you're taking your kitchen to the grocery store. Which is cool and funny. That's why I think it's like... This, this isn't like, oh, he's not using it right now. Like, if your tent was up when you went, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't know why. I just, for some reason, I'm slightly more embarrassed driving this. Maybe because I'm not actually an overlander than I was the Lexus Overland version because that was funny because it's a Lexus. Yeah, 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 And it's yeah. just like, what the heck is this Lexus doing with a camo wrap and a thing on the roof? Like, this thing is like, wow, this guy is pretty serious. He's gonna put out some fires or set something on fire? Like, I don't know what he's doing. But it is cool. Yeah. No, no hate on the Overland community. No, like, not at I all. I like it. Yeah, I'm wearing my Overlanding sort of shirt. Shout out to uh, Four Wheel Drive 24-7. They also came to America, so shout out them. I get it, it's cool. It is really cool. I just 
never did it. And overall looks, what do you think of this thing? I really like the looks. I think I like the looks of a Silverado more than I like the looks of an F-150. Oh, I don't. I, I, I like with the stripes and everything, and especially on the back too, the tailgate with the like different things and everything. Like I really love the looks of this. Yeah, we do have that uh, multifunction tailgate as well. Thank you for mentioning that. So you I think I like the looks there. of this more than the looks of a Tremor. No, I like a Tremor more. This is just like, there's something about these headlights that I don't love that I like the GMC version better. Maybe it's just these inner they boomerang like, things instead of outer I light think, things. I think Chevy and GMC better looks than Tremor, in my opinion. I think GMC better. GMC, Tremor, Chevy. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to compare a Tremor to a GMC to a Silverado, hit up tsb.truecar.com. Discounted price offers. All right, that's it. About the looks. Yes. Let's get to the price. Hit me with it. It's a lot of money, Yuri. This one starts at $86,303. Canadian. And this one is spec'd out to $101,113. Is that with the tent? No, that's an extra approximately $10,000 and all the stuff back there. Okay, $10,000 for the tent and all that stuff, I think is a lot better than I, I expected it to be like 25,000. I did too. But that brings the total price of this to like around $120,000. Well, like, okay, so like the tent I bought like eight years ago, so that still works. Like one of those for Coleman. Like a, for like 200 bucks. Yeah, it was like a Coleman pop up tent. Yeah. Maybe it's 250. Yeah. You know, I mean, you throw one of those in the back of a Civic, you can get pretty far. Yeah, or throw one of those in the back of a bed of a truck without having to put it on the roof. I, I saw a meme. It's like when I aired down on the trail and then uh, two, two hours later come across like a Camry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I've seen uh, that one. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, overlanding's fun, it looks cool. Let us know what you guys think. I do like this thing and it looks cool.